Hi, in this slide I want to touch on, it's actually the first of several slides, that will visit um, a case study of a, of a company I bought back in 1983, it was called Clark Security Products. And when I bought the company, before I bought the company, I did some due diligence. It had 3,000 active accounts. Uh, there were four branches, sort of a mothership in San Diego and small pop stands in uh, Las Vegas, Phoenix, and Denver. Uh, and they had a traditional outside rep service model. Uh, we didn't have any hotel locations. We had counters for contractor people to show up and buy stuff. Uh, but our locations were not friendly at all for doing that. Uh, when I looked at the customer profitability rank report, right away at the top was a customer who made almost $100,000 in net profit on one order. Now, it was sort of an incredible, out of the blue, I'm not even going to bother telling you the story, but it was an invisible niche all by itself, and nobody even really knew the story. And I thought, well, if this happens once every 10 years on random luck, then you've got to subtract 100000 bucks out of the loss that the company already was making at the time. Uh, so that was important, but I right away I said, well, "Wait a minute! You can make your luck. You know, who, we got a name, and this guy's going to be doing other projects in the future. Let's not hope that his his you know subcontractor finds us and calls us up. Let's go talk to the guy himself and find out what's going on and increase our odds of getting you know more jobs uh, one way or another." So. It turns out that nothing's a sure cinch, but certainly when you investigate deeper, you can take a few things to increase your odds a lot. Um, and if you think in terms of Vegas odds, if you play, play roulette, there are 36 numbers you can bet up, but there are 38 holes, including zero and double zero. So the ball lands in those things 5.26% of the time. That's the house's vigorous or edge. It doesn't take long for them to wipe everybody out. So if you can do things that increase your odds by 20, 30, 40%, that in time, you're going to get very lucky compared to the competition who isn't thinking and seeing things this way. They're just distracted by, you know, every customer is a customer, every phone call is a phone call, you know, every order is an order, get it out the door. Um, so uh, as I looked down the list and started sorting them into different piles very quickly, five out of the top ten uh, happened to be large, A-sized, commercial locksmith contractors all in San Diego County, where we had the biggest inventory and the longest track record of being there and so forth. Um, using those as proxies, I went on down the list, and there were about 100 active commercial locksmith contractors in Southern California that we serve more or less um, and uh, that they either are already had or could reach the $400 in gross margin per month potential to support an outside sales rep. Of the 100, maybe 50 exceeded it. 20 were actual losers. Uh, several of them were, quote, best accounts of ours have just hammered our, our counter every morning with lots of vans and so forth. Um, so I very quickly identified the 555 uh, for the main location. And I, I wanted to go out and research them myself to basically define more perfectly the service value equation and start to get my whole corporation, all the, the frontliners, you know, to do heroic acts, yes, service, and get the salespeople hyper-focused and figuring out how to help them invest more proactive, constructive, build, build, build the customer's bottom line uh, kind of service value. And of course, we identified the ones that people claimed were pure price buyers or claimed they were loyal to competition, but now we know that they're great levels of degree and somebody who's a pure price buyer may be playing off just two or three great service companies to get great service and the low price. And if we can get out of that box, uh, we might uh, make good things happen. So we're, the next couple of slides are going to look at uh, what I did manually for 555 in those days and how I went out the process of going out and defining the service value equation. Thank you.